historic photographs on view for the first time. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Michael Anderson. He is the Director of Public Relations and Marketing for the Reading Public Museum. Thanks so much for being with us. Hi, thank you. We're talking about two different photographers, and their work isn't necessarily important for its subject matter, but more important for its technique. For the technique and for all the, the things that came after the discoveries. They were not only scientists, they were artists. And uh, Edward Moybridge is one of the photographers from the late 1800s. And uh, Harold Edgerton, who, uh, whose works were published mostly in the mid-30s through uh, the, the mid-60s. And let's talk first uh, about Moybridge and, and his work. Talk to us about how it changed the way in which people thought about motion and move, or movement. Well, people were guessing up to that point. As a matter of fact, he was challenged to discover whether a horse trotting or galloping at one point all paws, or all feet paws, feet left the, uh, the ground at one time. So he set up a very ingenious setup of several cameras and trip wires which uh, you could see the horse actually moving in a certain uh, progression and, uh, and actually proved that at one point they were all off the ground. He later did uh, things with uh, its a portfolio called animal locomotion, but animals included people at that time. So his studies of people and animals and uh, in various walks of life. And uh, it was a precursor to um, American uh, moving photography, uh, you know, film. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Thomas Edison had met with uh, Moybridge and some of his te techniques in the early film production. Uh, Moybridge was the inventor of the zooproxiscope, which was a way of seeing these pictures that he took individually as a moving set, and you could actually see the motion. So it was really unique at the, in the late 1800s. Many of us dream about going into our attic or into the cellar and finding a hidden treasure, something that's valuable or historically important. That's exactly what happened at the museum. That's exactly what happened. We found this collection of uh, the animal locomotion f um, portfolio, which was available in the, at 1881 as, uh, by uh, subscription. And we're not sure how it became a part of the collection, but since the museum's history goes back to 1904, it's been there that long as, as, as far as we know it. It was officially accession in our collection uh, in 1997, but uh, we have this incredible collection of original color types, they were called, and uh, we'll have 18 of these selected uh, on, uh, on exhibit through uh, January 16th. So that's just one of, of the photographers that's being featured. Talk to us about the other one, who worked uh, decades later. Yes, Harold Edgerton was famous for his invention of stroboscopic uh, photography, where he would uh, use, rather than shutter speeds and several cameras, he would have a, an open camera in darkness, and he would use flashes of light, which would show various stations of motion. Uh, the particular shot that we have on now shows uh, someone jumping, skipping rope, uh, there are other shots that are uh, just simply stop action. I say simply, they're magnificent, or the, like a bullet going through an apple and what happens. So it captures moments of time. So <clears throat> one was using multiple cameras, one was using multiple flashes of light. And uh, the series of Edgerton photos that we got uh, just this year in, in uh, 2010, uh, a gift of nine of those, are, are actually very part, much a part of our collection now. So it's a good chance to show them both together and how they complement each other. And what do they tell us about photography today? Why are these two important photographers? Well, they were inventors. They were inventing techniques that we take for granted now. Uh, and uh, allow for not only artistic beauty, but scientific discovery through uh, motion. We see how plants grow, we see how people move, we, we stop action to see what actually happens. Uh, and I'm sure all of these things are commonplace now through digital processes. But back then, back in the 1880s, uh, mo moving photography was something new. And back in the mid-30s through the 60s, this uh, uh, stop action and quick sh shutter speeds and quick flashes of light was very revealing and uh, got many people thinking in different directions. So two photographers who really helped people change the way they saw the world. Right, and our title is called Photographing Motion, which is what it does. All right, very good, and it runs through January 16th. Thanks for being with us, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. We've been talking with Michael Anderson. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Newsmakers.